So I've just started the recording, Jeff. Right, Jochen Arlson, okay. Uh, right, Chrysop out, Chrysop, we've got to address the Archwilio, Castle Hitler Talbot. Welcome uh, to Neath but Talbot County Borough Council's Governance and Audit Committee meeting today on the 18th of February 2022. We are remotely via Microsoft Teams. And just to make you all aware, as Alison has done, the meeting is being recorded, as recording just begun. Can I also welcome any members of the public and press to today's meeting and kindly ask if there are any to um, observe the meeting only and not to speak or participate. Can I remind you all to switch your phones to silence for the duration of the meeting? In addition, can I refer you to the protocols for remote meetings which have been previously circulated? Namely, your microphones should be switched to mute unless you're speaking. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either via the chat function or by raising your electronic hand via Teams. I will assume that you have all read the paperwork before us today prior to the meeting. Please only use the chat function to indicate if you wish to speak as an alternative to the electronic hand function or to raise any technical issues. When asking a question, can you please indicate the page number? But firstly, we now need to do a roll call. So I'm Councillor Del Morgan, the chair, and I'm present. I will call on the Democratic Services Officer, Alison, to take the roll call. Alison, please. Thank you, Chair. So if Matthew Dunn is present, so we'll go through members first. Councillor Lynette Purcell. Present. I've had apologies from Councillor Helen Kerry clark Councillor Oliver Davis. Present, thank you. Councillor Sharon Freegad, and some will be late to the meeting. Councillor Stephanie Lynch. Councillor John Miller. Present, Alison. Councillor Rydia Meisen. Uh, present, no, Alison, yes, I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Suzanne Renkes. Present. Councillor Anthony Richards. Present, no, present, Alison. Thank you. Councillor Robert Wood. Present, thank you. Alwyn Woolcock. Uh, present, no, present. Thank you. So we'll go to the lay members. Joanna Jenkins. She's still not in. OK, we'll go to officers. Hugh Jones. Yeah, I'm present, Alison. And Marie O'Donnell. Present, Alison. Diane Milligan. Present, Alison. Aaron Fulo Harris. Present, Alison. John Jenkins. Present now. I've had apologies from Justine Morgan. Gillian Gillette. Present. Thank you. And Lisa Cody Davis. Present, Alison. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else present in the meeting who's taking part that I haven't called? No, I think that's the roll call complete then, Chair. Uh, John Mara, Alison, thank you. Uh, right, we, we'll um, obviously if Joe Jenkins joins us uh, midway through, we'll add her to the list of those present. Um, OK, item one, item in declarations of interest. Can members please indicate whether you have any declarations in relation to the items that we have on today's agenda? Right, no one's indicating, so we'll go on uh, to item two. These are the minutes of the previous meeting, ages five to ten. So uh, first of all, can I call the pages and please shout out if you've seen any glaring errors on any of them? Uh, page five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. We're going to ask please for um, um, any comments on them. OK, if not, I need a proposer and seconder. Someone move? Yeah, happy to move, Chair. Do you have a second? Seconder? A second, Chair. Yeah, OK, I've got a thumbs up from John Miller. Thank you, do you have a OK, so we'll move on to item three, which is Audit Wales Work Programme and Timetable, East Patalbert County Borough Council. This is the quarterly update from the end of, uh, up to the end of December. Uh, pages 11 to 20. And I believe that um, uh, Non Jenkins is going to take us through this. Non, Lana Tito, come out. Jacob Varian, Kreirev, Borada, Er Vasse, Vasin Stormes, good morning. If a bit stormy, and apologies if you can hear anything in the background. It is quite bad here at the moment. It seems to have decided to hurt us as I join you um, in committee. So, um, I'm Non Jenkins from uh, Audit Wales. I think maybe my first meeting with you um, uh, uh, today. So uh, I've been a manager in the Mid and West 
uh, cluster, so the six Mid and West Wales um, councils uh, since the beginning of January. And Justine usually comes and she sends her apologies. So just quickly to run through um, the paper before you, we now uh, give every council a quarterly update on the progress we have made uh, in relation to our audit work throughout the year so that you get to see how things are progressing, but also see the totality, including uh, CIW and Estin work too, so that you see in one place how things are progressing. And obviously um, ask any questions that you want to. I might not be able to answer everything, but happy to take um, the um, uh, questions away because obviously I don't do all of this work, but uh, uh, we have a lot of colleagues that are involved in, in various pieces. We also try and include links um, into the final outputs so that you have access to the, when we've completed a piece of work, that you can actually click on that link so that you can read it um, at your leisure. Obviously, we will be, it's a summary, so when we have finalised pieces of work, they'll be coming through to you anyway separately, but this is uh, just a way of pulling it together so that you can uh, keep track of um, our progress and for us to update you on anything in that sense. So as you can see, um, uh, the uh, performance work and audit work uh, for 2021 has been uh, completed and the links are there for you uh, to those reports, but also uh, giving you an update on the 2021-22 performance audit work also um, there for you. Uh, the, the thing that I wanted to draw attention to in, in that is that we are now coming to a conclusion on our springing forward piece of work that's on page 13 um, with you. And we should uh, be reporting back to you um, in the next few uh, weeks uh, or a couple of months anyway. So um, because that's a national piece of work that we're doing across all councils. So if I leave it there, happy to take any questions or comments. Uh, Members, colleagues, we've got um, um, the chance to ask questions now on this item. So I've got the vice chair up first. Uh, Lynette, please. Thank you very much. I'm looking at page 14 where it says follow up on people sleeping rough. And it says this work is not progressing in 2021-22. And I just wondered why not. Okay. Don't push in that second. Thank you. Um, I, I can clar clarify um, back to you. I, I will ask the team in terms of that. I think it's due to the fact that um, we consult on uh, our programme of work with councils um, in terms of national studies. And I think that was one that we were going to delay, not necessarily do it this year, but we will be doing it uh, hopefully potentially in, in the in the coming years. So, you know, we, we do take into consideration the consultation that we um, uh, share with councils every year. So I think it's a matter of timing rather than not doing it at all. But I can confirm um, that with you um, separately. Thank you for that. Diolch. Um, can go to Richard. Your hand went up and then down. So um, if you don't have a question. No. Uh, yeah, no, it was the same question as what Councillor Purcell asked. So uh, oh, I put my okay. hand. Thank you. Diolch, Anthony. Uh, no other hands up at, at the moment. So members, you happy with this? Well, good, uh, th thanks to uh, to non uh, and um, members yeah. will note this particular item. Okay, note this report. Diolch. Item four. Uh, this is Treasury management monitoring, uh, pages twenty one to twenty eight. Um, so I'll pass over to uh, Hugh Jones for this item, please. Hugh, Diolch. Hi, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, apologies if you can hear some noise in the background. My carport roof is about to blow off, so. <laughs> <laughs> and try to dash it back and forth between the meeting and keeping an eye on it. So, um, yes, this report is the, the standard Treasury management monitoring report that was reported to Cabinet back in February, and it outlines Treasury management activity since the last report, and it is here for uh, members of the Governance and Audit Committee to note the contents, Chair. Do you um, members, are, are there any questions or any comments uh, from members? 
No, if not, well, uh, page 26, the recommendation is to um, uh, indeed to, to note the contents of the monitoring report. Uh, so members happy to do that, please. Thank you. Right, item PIMP item five, internal audit progress report. So this is pages 29 to 46 on the document. Um, Anne-Marie O'Donnell and uh, Diane Mulligan will will answer questions on this. Uh, Diane, are you going to start uh, the presentation? Yes, thank you. Um, this is um, basically the standard update report that we present to you on a quarterly basis. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologise. There's been a typing mistake on the heading of the report. It should just read in general audit update the report and not revised audit plan. Oh, yes. Um, other than that, probably the only thing we need to draw your attention to is the staffing issues on pages 29 to 30. Um, there's been a considerable number of days lost in this quarter due to sickness. And obviously, if, if this does continue, then it could have an impact on the output at the end of the year. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, both Anne-Marie and myself are happy to take questions on the report, but Anne-Marie will lead on these. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, dear, dear Lord, Diane. Um, th this is for noting, but um, maybe members might, might have some questions or some comments. A anyone? Vice Chair, Inez. Thank you. I've got three questions. Um, <clears throat> if I, <clears throat> excuse me, if I do all questions um, slowly and then different people might want to respond, I don't know. On page 30, Diane's just referred to the staff absences, but it's talking about um, the, possible, well, the proposal to leave a post vacant. So I just wondered whether there's any possibility that leaving the assistant auditors post vacant until the review is completed, whether that might increase the level of risk, particularly as the work of the internal audit is key in relation to ensuring compliance with internal controls. So I'm just a little bit, we need a little bit of reassurance on that one. The second one was on page 36 which was my concern about the schools that have provided no information um, when requested by our auditors. And I wondered if we could have an explanation and the proposed actions associated with that. And page 39 was just a little alarm bell when I found that the fraud officer was providing assistance to the team administering COVID related grants. Now, as committee will know, it's the COVID related grants that I've been a bit twitchy about ever since all of this began. So if I could have um, information about all of those for the committee, I'd be really grateful. Thank you. I can repeat any one of them if necessary. Thanks, Lynette. That's fine. I'm happy to answer those questions. In relation to keeping the, the grade five vacant, I realise that that might look like um, an odd thing to do based on the fact that we're losing days with sickness. However, whilst we're still working remotely, if we employ someone at a grade five, generally they will have no audit experience whatsoever. So essentially it will be a drain on the existing staff resources that we have as it will take staff away from the audits that they're actually working on um, to train that member of staff. Also, we have quite a long lead in period. So, you know, even if we advertised uh, the post at the moment, um, you know, that that could take a couple of months, three months uh, before that person was uh, actually in post. Therefore, I made the decision that it was less of a risk um, to leave it vacant than it was to try and fill it at the moment. It is a very tricky post to try and fill, um, you know, at, at that grade um, for uh, the, the level of work um, required, which is why we're hoping that when we do um, the review that um, the the, the structure will be looked at um, and that post may be developed um, to be something other than uh, what it is at the moment. 
if that makes sense. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. Um, the other ones, the schools? The schools, right. In relation to the, the two schools who provided no information, um, when the that audit was being reviewed and I was made aware that there were two schools who hadn't, despite reminders, provided any information. I instructed the auditor to email the schools to say, if we don't have the information by X date, we will issue the report and it will say that two schools have fa failed to respond. When she came back to me, when the deadline had passed and said the schools haven't come back to, to me, I contacted the head teachers directly to ask them um, exactly why they hadn't responded and to advise them essentially of the consequences if they didn't respond. I had replies by return from both of the head teachers um, who were uh, very apologetic and quoted uh, staffing pressures due to COVID. Um, following discussions with the head teachers, um, I agreed another short extension. Um, both head teachers complied with that, and all of the documentation has now been received um, in full. And essentially, there, there were no issues with anything that the schools um, had sent. Um, I think it was just one of those things um, from speaking to the head teachers. Uh, it wasn't that very high up the priority list. Um, but hopefully going forward, um, it, it won't happen again with those schools. But we have had everything we need and there are no issues. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Vice Chair, OK? Yeah, all right. Um, and Councillor Purcell's last query was in relation to the fraud auditor providing assistance with the, the COVID grants. We Councillor are, Purcell, sorry to interrupt, Councillor Purcell seems to be losing her contact, so um, uh, she won't be able to hear this, uh, this answer. If, um, no. if, if you care to wait a, a moment. Okay. Um, uh, Chair, uh, she's she's just texted me to say she's in a power cut. Oh dear, that presumably means she won't be back that quickly. Okay, sorry, Anne Marie, can you can you continue then, and uh, okay. we'll have to relay the answer to um, uh, Vice Chair later on. Okay, um, as members will be aware, we have done um, some work on COVID grants um, throughout the year, and we've issued reports. The work that we did was then based on grants that had been paid out. Um, at the moment, the team <clears throat> processing the COVID isolation grants are under considerable pressure. Um, and there was um, a feeling that there could perhaps be some fraud within a number of those grants that were waiting um, to be paid. And um, so I made the decision that it would be beneficial for the authority as a whole for that team to have an extra pair of hands um, and for the fraud officer um, to review the systems that they have in place in relation to the grants and also to dip sample some of the grants that had been applied for um, before they were paid out. Um, and as a result of his involvement, there have been um, a few of the grants that have been refused. So he is continuing to provide support to the team. Thank you, Anne Marie. Before I bring in uh, Councillor John Miller, uh, can I just ask if if you could um, briefly respond uh, following the meeting to the vice chair? Um, uh, perhaps you could refer her to the recording of this meeting, and uh, she can hear the answer in full. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So, uh, Councillor John Miller, John. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, my request was going to be something similar. Where uh, answers cannot be given today, can they be sent to the committee officer who can circulate it to every member of the committee, please. 
Thank you. I'm sure that's okay, John. So, uh, Henri, can we take that on board if um, if there is, uh, uh, you know, a set of follow up um, responses for any questions, then perhaps members can be can be circulated. Is that all right? Um, well, I I will certainly respond to uh, Councillor Purcell in relation to that question. Um, I believe I've answered the other questions that have been asked. Yes. Okay. I, I suppose John is asking generally. Uh, there might be f further questions that haven't yes. come yet. Yes. Certainly. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I was I was uh, in particular referring to the previous speaker, who said they would respond to the question there, and you know it, it's something that goes on now and again, isn't it? Where people respond to just the person that asks the question, and it should be to the committee. Thank you. Okay. Well, the, the minutes will reflect. Um, uh, most of the, of the facts, but uh, yeah, I, we take that on board, uh, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, uh, John. Um, right, I don't see any other hands up at the minute, but um, I do have, I'm looking to see, I don't think Jo Jenkins has been able to join us still. Um, she did circulate a few questions in advance of the meeting because she thought she wouldn't be attending because of a, um, another event <laughs> which has been cancelled, but um, I have it here. It's on uh, page 31. She, she's reading item six and, and being reminded that uh, of course changes are, are going to occur following May um, so that the new governance and audit committee will have more lay members and, and the chair of the new committee will have to be a lay member. Uh, sh but she's asking about the vice chair uh, and querying whether or not the vice chair will be appointed from among the lay members or from the councillor members. So um, Anne-Marie, if you could uh, respond formally to that so, so that it's on the minutes. Yeah, um, it's my understanding, Chair, that both the Chair and the Vice Chair going forward from May 2022 will be lay members and not elected members. Thank you. There we are. Thanks very much. Uh, she did ask an another couple of questions. They've been covered elsewhere. Um, one was in particular to R32 that's just been asked earlier. So um, uh, we take that as being completed. Thank you, Anne-Marie. I see no other hands then. So. Um, we take it that uh, item five is complete. Uh, this is for noting members, so there's no recommendation here. Um, item six is complaints handling and the review of uh, the effectiveness of the complaints handling uh, procedures. Pages 47 to 74. Uh, and this one will be taken by uh, Karen, fellow Harris, uh, Karen. Kreiser. Thank you, Chair. Um, apologies for me as well if you've got some background noise you can hear. I'm right on Abra Avon seafront and it's um oh. it's it's a tad windy down here. So apologies if you can hear it in the background. So um just as an intro, this report is something the committee hasn't received before. It's been prepared to enable this committee to discharge a new duty it has under the Local Government and Elections Wales Act. And that duty is for this committee to assess the authority's ability to handle complaints effectively. So hopefully in this report in front of you today, you've got enough of information to make that assessment. So I've included some background info in there about how complaints are dealt with. So complaints that come in are dealt with one of two processes. Social care complaints that come in follow the statutory social services complaints procedure and all other complaints that come in relating to all our other council services are dealt with via a corporate comments and um, compliments and complaints policy. It's probably worth me noting that policy um, was revised last year and approved by Cabinet back in March because the Ombudsman issued some guidance around a model complaints policy. So we updated our policy that got approved last year, so that's the policy that's used now by officers across the council other than social services. We shared that policy with the Ombudsman and the Ombudsman um, confirmed it was compliant with their model. So I just wanted to make the committee aware of that. So in terms of how effective um, the authority is in handling complaints, data is included in the report um, for the full year 2021. And I've also put in some data for the first six months of 21-22 as well. Overall, the number of complaints we receive as a local authority is relatively, relatively low. But in terms of how effective we are, it's probably worth thinking about or looking at how many complaints go from stage one to stage two. Because for a complaint to go from stage one to stage two, that means the complainant 
as being is unhappy with the response they had at stage one or they their complaint hasn't been responded to or they think it hasn't been considered mm -hmm. properly so in 2021 we did see a reduction in the number of complaints that went to stage two however there has been an increase in the first six months of the current financial year so we've gone from three to nine in the first six months However, although that seems quite a big, large figure comparable year on year, that is still relatively low for a number of stage two complaints. So in addition to the number of complaints we receive, it's also really important that we learn from the complaints we have so that we can improve services. So I've got two examples for the committee chair. So in the Environment Directorate, a customer had their application for a side waste refuse collection refused. And when the customer requested to take the complaint through our complaints procedure, their request was ignored. So on investigation, it was found that the customer had actually responded to an auto generated email, which would not have been read by officers. So the learning from this complaint was the wording of the auto generated email was changed and that stated, so if a resident wished for an appeal, that they needed to send an email to a different address. So that was the learning from that one. Another example for you is from social services. So on completion of an independent investigation of um, stage two complaint relating to looked after children review meetings, the investigating officer recommended that consideration should be given to improving the administrative support provided to caseworkers by relieving them of practical non-specialist tasks such as typing, circulation and distribution of papers. So following that, the Children and Young People Service agreed to review the administrative support and process for conducting LAC reviews. So that's another example, just one another example of where we've taken the learning from complaints to improve services. So in addition to learning from complaints, it's also important staff are sufficiently trained and aware of procedures um, on dealing with complaints and refresher training has just been delivered to staff. It's just been delivered in January and that was delivered by the Ombudsman Office. So Chair, that brings me to the end of the report. I hope the committee have received adequate information to make that assessment. If members have got any particular questions on the social services process, Lisa's with us from social services, but happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you, uh, Karin, that's, um, uh, that's great. Uh, but personally, um, thank you for, for this report. Uh, it's very thorough and it explains that the procedures um you know excellently so um i have some hands up uh, and as karen is saying lisa cody davis is here uh, to deal with any particular queries related relating to social services complaints uh, and karen herself will take any other complaints first up then uh, councillor john miller john thank you uh, chair can i say that uh, i found this report excellent it's uh, precise and gives all the information we need. My issue is on page 10 of the uh, policy itself. It uh, talks about what we expect from you as the complainant. And uh, it's my own personal opinion, Chair, that I think that this is too late in the report and it should be very much at the front of the report in the introduction. I think that would set the tone of of the policy itself. I've got no issues with the policy. It is excellent, but I, I think that needs to be more prominent in the in the um, in in the scheme of things. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, I, I agree it should be prominent. I mean, maybe in terms of the report itself, uh, I, I suppose the report is here for members to to receive and accept. But uh, in terms of promoting the information surrounding the complaints procedures, um, then I agree that that, um, uh, that aspect should be made front and foremost so that members of the public know exactly uh, how they should be behaving uh, and how they should be putting their complaints forward. That, that, that's a very good point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Right, Nessa, can you hear Arwin Wilcock? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, a couple of things, uh, really, Chair. Uh, Karin mentioned the, the two stages, um, stage one and stage two, and um, there used to be at one time a stage three. So presumably that is still 
uh, not there now on that on that stages one and two are internal and uh, if the complaint uh, requires to go further than that then um the the the, the complainant is asked to refer to the ombudsman now yes. I, 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 I welcome really the drop in in uh, the number of complaints particularly in stage two when I was uh, the cabinet member for social care, health and, uh, and housing uh, chair, it was it was quite rare for cases to go to stage two then. It was it was incredibly rare for it to go to stage three, although I do during my time in that uh, with that portfolio, uh, remembering one case that went to a stage three, but it was internal. So the question really is, it's still two, uh, two, two stages internally and then should the complainant not be satisfied, then he or she would be asked to refer to the uh, ombudsman. And secondly, Chair, and this is a little bit of a bugbear that I've had, and I've mentioned this in, in, a, in a previous meeting uh, before, um, the, the use of the word customer. I'm not quite happy with that, you know, because what I look at, a customer is someone who if he or she is not happy with the service they get in Tesco, they can go to Lidl or Waitrose or wherever else. They haven't got that case if they're a council taxpayer. They are stuck with Neath Talbot or Swansea or Carmarthen or Powys or wherever they are. So I'm not quite happy, Chair, with, with, with the use of the word customer. I would much prefer to see service user or, or complainant or whatever. So those are the two points that I wanted to make. Do you have our... Do you have Welcome, Councillor Frigad, who's joined us. Uh, Hugh Jones has had to Thank you. leave, leave uh, very suddenly. So, um, uh, Karen, do you want to respond at all to, to that? I mean, um, Arwin's comments are, are straightforward. Uh, anything you want to add? No, Chair, perhaps um, including um, Councillor Wolcock and Councillor Miller's comments, perhaps the, the committee would like to make them as recommendations after their assessment of the adequacy, and we can take them away then and consider them as the, co as the complaints group. Yes, indeed. I, I'm certainly happy with that. I'm sure members will agree. Um, I see no other hands, by the way, so I'm I'm going to go to page 53 and the top of page 54. Where we've got recommendations on this item. So relating to the complaints handling review of effectiveness. Oh, um, Councillor we... Morgan, just before we proceed, can I just check Councillor Freegard hasn't got any interest to declare, please? Ah, oh, good point. Uh, Sharon, uh, we, we, we've obviously done interests uh, at the beginning. Have you got any declaration of interest? No, I couldn't see any when I was going through the papers. OK, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Thanks, yep. Chair. Cheers. Um, OK, then, so back to page 53 at the bottom. So noting the information presented in the report, uh, review and assess the authority's ability to handle complaints effectively and to make comments and recommendations, as, as we now just have, uh, in relation to the authority's ability to handle complaints effectively. So uh, would somebody like to move that recommendation, please? I'll move, Chair. Thank you, John. And uh, seconded? Yeah, happy to do that, Chair. Do you have a OK, so all members happy with that. Uh, thank you again, uh, Karen. Um, thank you, Chair. OK, and um, uh, thank you, Lisa, for, for, for being here for, for any questions. But uh, we appreciate the work going on behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to move on now then to uh, item seven. And this is the risk management update, pages 75 to 78. Now, um, in Hugh's absence, I'm not sure who's going to sorry, take Chair, this. I, I, oh, my Hugh Noel, right. Uh, uh, sorry, 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 back, Chair. I'm sorry for, the, for this uh, chaotic uh, appearance this morning. but um, That's all right. It's the storm, I know. Uh, the, the, this report is just for governance and audit committee members to note the work that has been undertaken over the last two years around risk management. So the first year of the pandemic, obviously, we were very busy managing risks as part of the emergency response and um, incident management team arrangements. There has been an update to Cabinet in relation to the Strategic Risk Register, where scrutiny members um, highlighted the fact that, um, that perhaps the reports weren't as meaningful and readable as possible. So we are in the process of reviewing the risk management policy um, at the moment. And once we have done that, we will report it back to this committee, well, not this particular committee chair, because it will be in a different guise, but uh, the, the Governance and Audit Committee post, post elections in Bay Chair. So. Thank you for that. Uh, Hugh, thank you. Um, members, this is for noting, but are there any questions or comments? The recommendation is on page 77, it's a straightforward noting uh, recommendation. 
uh, if somebody'd like to quickly propose and second. Thank you, John. Second. So we can take that and move on now then to uh, item eight. This is the this is, this is our draft annual report, the committee's report as for the um, Pacific year 2020 to 2021. It's always behind uh, the calendar, but this is on pages 79 and 80. Um, I suppose I'll take this, but only just to say formally that uh, um, I'm proposing that we uh, accept the report. If there are any comments or questions or, or any suggested amendments, I'm happy to hear them. Otherwise, they will be um, uh, this report will be put uh, um, commended to full council later on. Um, are there any items that anyone wants to raise? No. OK, can I move then from the chair that we uh, that we commend this to full council? Someone second. I'm seeing a nod. Yes. OK, everyone happy. Thank you. Right. Um, here we go. Uh, item nine. Are there any urgent items? Well, apart from Storm Unis, no, uh, there aren't any. And we will now go into private session. Uh, and this is for, for the recording purposes. We are going to stop the recording, I'm sure. But item 10 before that is to access um, to take the access to meetings point uh, so that pursuant to section 100 A four and five of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded for the following items of business, which involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 12 and 15 of part four of Schedule 12A of the above Act. So can I please have a proposer and a seconder move that we chair. move in private? Thank you, John. I Second move, Chair. Yeah, yeah, dear Heron, uh, thank you. So we now move into private and we will stop the recording, I think, Alison.